Hello and welcome to Latter Day Lesbian, the podcast about an ex Mormon gay girl. That's, That's me, you, Shelley. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, just trying to figure out her life. Yeah, I'm so close. By the <laughs> yeah, way, yeah. so close to having it figured out. You get back to me on that. I sure will. I'm Mary. I'm Shelley. Hi. Hi. We're staring at each other through the plexiglass. Yes, that's what we do we every talk. time we record. We talk, you listen. It's a great friendship. Mm-hmm. We're under the tent, mm-hmm. as soundproof as it's going to get in our house. One of these days, we're going to have a room in our house that is just for recordings. We don't have to connect everything and set up the umbrellas with the sheets draped to them. We just, <laughs> the a little ease would be nice at this point. Well, the umbrellas are not really designed to hold soundproofing sheets. Sure, but wouldn't it be nice if we could just walk into a room and shut the door and Absolutely. sit down and start? Absolutely. Like, I've literally been sitting here for probably 20 minutes waiting. <laughs> well, I had computer issues. And like, drinking wine. Yeah, no, so you're not really wasting your time <laughs> there. No, I had to update my software on this computer we're using. Okay. You know, technical crap. It happens. Um, the umbrellas are actually primarily used as lighting devices. They deflect a light that we, that they're part of our lighting kit. Yes. And uh, what do we use the lighting kit for, Mary? Uh, well, I'm glad you asked, Shelly. <laughs> 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 we use them for our after show videos. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And speaking of that, we need to give a little shout out to our Patreon supporters for the week. Yes. I'm kind of like so freaking happy right now. <laughs> are you are kind because of? Because <laughs> because we started our Patreon page, and if you don't know what it is, go check it out, patreon.com slash Latterday Lesbian. Yes. And I almost said WWW. I know. I'm very proud of you right now. Thank you. It almost happened. <laughs> and going forward, guys, we're going to try to get an after show out every week because we want to have one for every episode. So we're catching up right now. And we'll have blooper reels and all sorts of fun stuff. So check out the Patreon page. But what I was excited about was we have seven brand new patrons. Yeah. Um, and when you join... Our our Patreon page, you get a shout out. Yeah. Shall but you I know do the what we out? decided to what? do? Go, what? Because some people are sensitive about their names being announced, what we decided to do was do a first name and last initial. If you would like something different, mm-hmm. let us know. Yep. And we are happy to accommodate your special needs. That's yes. fine. Like if you want to give us, say, your sibling's name and get them in trouble with your parents. <laughs> I like it. Do it. <laughs> but anyway, then we will do a correction on the very next episode if we've done it wrong. Maybe yeah. we mispronounced your name or you want your entire name. That's why we're going to start with first name, last initial. Yes. Can I now read the names? I wish you would. Okay. So we had two people who joined us and they were like, you know, we don't really need a shout out. But I'm not hearing that. So I'm going to give them a shout out anyway, but I'm not going to use their names. So patron number one is Cora Whore. Thank you. Cora Whore? Oh, Mary, you don't know who that is. <laughs> no. Cora Whore is like the bad guy from the Book of Mormon. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you always got to have a villain in a book. Of course. And this is Cora mm-hmm. Whore. And thank you, Cora Whore, for joining Cora us. Whore. Thanks for becoming a patron. What a name. Second, we're just going to call her Jezebel. Oh, is that in the Book of Mormon or is that just a common? No, nah, it's not in the Book of Mormon. They don't talk a lot about women in the Book of Mormon or in any scriptures for that I mean, matter. Jezebel is mentioned in the Bible. Yeah. I don't she remember. She was a whore. Yeah, right? there's, there was something going on with her. She was evil in some way. I don't okay. really remember. Well, those I mean, are just fake names Clearly, right now. Jezebel has a bad rap because everybody knows <laughs> to call some evil woman Jezebel. Wait, but I like this patron. Actually, Should we call love her something else? <laughs> Let's call her Sophia. That means wisdom in the Bible. Okay, Sophia it is. So thank you, Sophia, for yeah. subscribing. Don't call anyone Jezebel. <sighs> Fine. Okay. Moving on, Kathleen M., Thank you so much. Appreciate yeah, no, it. Love Kathleen her. didn't mind her name being mentioned. No, she didn't at all. Yeah. We've had a few back and forth emails. And that's another cool thing is when you subscribe, I get an email, boom, right away. And that kind of starts conversation. Because you need more people to email. I do. I do. Yeah, you don't have enough. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know when you started this project, you would have so many more friends? No. That's no. kind of cool. I love it. I know you do. I love learning about people and I love sharing no, my story, it's really interesting. obviously. But hearing people tell, Tell us their stories is freaking badass. I yeah. love it. Can I do the next Patreon shout out? Go. Kimberly A. Kimberly A. She's fantastic. Yeah. So thank you. And we are now uh, Facebook friends. Uh-huh. You guys were friends via an ex-Mormon group, I think. Is that right? 
I don't even know, but now we are friends on Marco Polo, <laughs> the Marco Polo okay, app. They are not a sponsor. Oh, sorry. Marco <laughs> Polo, if you want to sponsor us, cool. Do we have another one? We do. Sasha G, baby. Thank you, Sasha. Sasha, send us some more stuff. I kept trying to find some stuff about you, and um, I want to know more. Message. Chat us up. Okay. Um, oh, there's more. Oh, there are more? Yeah, there were okay. seven. Wow. There were seven. How many there have we gotten through? Like two. We have two more. Are you ready? Okay. Next one. Has the best name. What is it? Shelly J. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's my name. Did you did you subscribe? Didn't. Did not. <laughs> um, but Shelly J, who is not me, who actually has more kids than me. What? what? Isn't that, <laughs> How is like, that I possible? I was crazy. No, this other <laughs> Shelly J is crazy like me plus two. Wow. So thank you for finding the time in your life of <laughs> doing whatever with nine kids to quickly hop onto Patreon and subscribe. Yeah, I didn't think it was possible to have more kids than you, but you, clearly you it is. You can. It's amazing. Yeah, I quit. I quit early. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Cora Whore, mm-hmm. it sounds like a dirty name. It sounds well, worse than Jezebel. Guy. He was a bad guy. I know. I can't believe you picked whores and bad guys as Patreon subscribers. That's funny, Mary. Okay. Is it not funny? Even evil people want to subscribe to us. <laughs> you guys should all want to subscribe because even Cora Whore and is Jezebel. subscribing. Cora Whore and Jezebel. Uh, so all of you out there who are like, your name is John and Steven. We're going to give you Mary a name. Beth. Don't let Shelly name you. <laughs> That's why you didn't get the priesthood. Because oh you God, can't name people. I named, this is your new name. Your new name is Cora Whore and Jezebel. It's terrible. Okay, next time we have Patreon subscribers who don't want their name mentioned, yep. I'm going to do the naming. But you need to name them from the Book of Mormon. Do they have to be so... Um, yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one. There's another one? Yes, we're okay. only on six now. All last right. one, Jenny... G. That sounds like a real name. Jenny G lives in the area, and I oh, yeah? am pumped because we're going to meet her on Thursday. Oh, right, because what are we doing again? We're going to that guy, um, Sam Harris, the podcaster. Oh. We're going to his live podcast show. We're meeting up with a bunch of D.C. ex-Mormons, Jenny being one, and we get to meet, and we're going to drink and check out his show. Okay. And we are going to be wearing our new Latter-day Lesbian t-shirts. We are. It's going to be awesome. (laughs) With our faces on them. I know. One more thing while we're on the subject of Patreon is we established new Patreon goals. For example, I think it said if 50 patrons subscribe, then I will release new mullet photos. (laughs) And if 70... I can't believe you have more mullet photos. Oh, God. The 80s was a long time. (laughs) Uh, If we reach 75, then Mary... You know, no. I typed it and clicked <laughs> enter. Already, it's happening. Yeah, I'm already uh, on the hook for this, aren't yeah. I? Yeah, you are. Anyway, we have a few different goals. So those okay, are just a couple. my mullet photo, by the way, I'm uh-huh. in my sister's wedding. Yep, it's 1988, I think. Mm-hmm. And that like red satin puffy yeah. dress oh, is yeah. amazing. I'm wearing a red, some sort of red dress mm-hmm. with puffy shoulders. Oh well, yeah, and pearl necklace. Aww, <laughs> so pretty. But I don't look very feminine in the picture. Um, you look a little awkward. <laughs> like, Is huh. that a compliment? Yep. Okay. I always felt awkward in a dress. Yeah, no, I, I seem strange. Yeah, it seems that wrong. Re- that reminds me of um, my oldest brother's first wedding. I was also wearing a puffy red dress. I was a bridesmaid. And way back then, I was attending BYU and I was broken, so I would go to the plasma center and I would donate plasma. <laughs> Audience, make raise money? your hand if you've donated plasma <laughs> to make ends meet when you were in college. So I did. Anyway, the week before I was supposed to go out to California for the wedding, I was donating plasma. And at the very end, they leave the needle in your arm and then they put saline into your arm to like rehydrate you. But somehow I had shifted or whatever and the needle had come out of my vein. And um, so it just pumped sailing into like my arm flesh and it just swelled up like this oh, like this no. bubbly balloon which was very weird looking and painful so then when I went to the wedding and I was in the wedding that entire section of my arm where they put that needle in <laughs> was like black and blue it looked like tracks it looked like it was an IV drug user nice yeah that marriage didn't last so you had a brother that got divorced yes interesting yeah. and he's still in the Mormon church well he wasn't married in the temple first go around she wasn't a Mormon okay yeah wow there's some uh, skeletons in your closet. I know. So many skeletons. Shelly J. Shelly J. The other Shelly J. Anyway, I think that's um, that's it for Patreon today. Well, the other thing I wanted to mention about Patreon, so oh, go ahead. one of the tiers we've talked about is the after show. Mm-hmm. And in recording one of these after shows, mm-hmm. you threw out a funny expression. 
and it was something about a navel. Oh my god! And marrow in the bones. Health in the navel. Health in the navel. What is that? <laughs> so I, okay. So based on yet another ridiculous expression, and I've heard a lot of these at this point. I mm-hmm. decided that we should create another segment on our podcast Ooh. called "Phrase of the Day." Oh my gosh! But I think we might need theme music because you know any excuse. Any excuse for Mary to sing a song <laughs> and have some music. Wait a minute. Are you revealing that I'm the LDL singers? <laughs> <laughs> Words out. Guilty. Mary is the LDL singers. <laughs> but I like to harmonize and I just like sing with myself. Mm-hmm. Mm, it's a little hobby. I mean, who would you? Who else would you sing with? I could sing with you. We could try. Okay. Maybe. Can, we'll... I, can I be the bass? <laughs> Mama sang bass. Daddy sang dinner. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know me. Okay. So, so weird word of the day. What are we calling it? Phrase of the day. Phrase of the day. And you know, it has that rhyming thing. Do you think our listeners would want to tell us what phrase I should quiz you with? Oh, that'd be fun. Listeners, if you have a super Mormon phrase that you want me to say, hey, Mary, what do you think about this? And let Mary try to like deal with it. (laughs) Reason it out. Reason it out. Uh, guess what? I'm never going to win this <laughs> quiz game of mm-hmm. yours, mm-hmm. but I will respond appropriately with enough like, what? And gasps and things. I like it. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. We have got to dedicate an episode to the temple. Can we do that next time? <sighs> I know we, we so keep many putting things it we keep off. Saying. We have to dedicate a, an episode to blah, blah, blah. I know. We keep putting it off and putting it off, but this is some really good shit. What was the navel one again? Health, Health in the navel. Health in the navel. Marrow in the bones. Marrow in the bones. Audience, keep going. There's more? Oh, yeah. What else is there? Strength in the loins and in the sinews. The sinews? Yeah. I don't even know. That. I don't so know. Stupid. This is the name of the second token of the Melchizedek priesthood. What the fuck <laughs> are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so, wait a minute. Has anyone ever explained what they mean by health in the sinews or whatever Here's the hell? Here's the thing about the temple they don't explain shit. Before you even hear any of the stuff, they make you covenant to never reveal any of this stuff, but they don't tell you what it is. And they're like, well, you can leave or you can covenant to abide by all of it. It's like this. Hey, Mary. Yes, Shelly. <laughs> Here's the thing. You can either like leave and say no, or you can promise to do everything I'm about to tell you. Go. What do you choose? Uh, leave and say no. Yeah, well, you can't when you're Mormon because you're like, everyone's sitting there. But I'm telling you, you have to <laughs> promise to do whatever I'm about to say, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Well, then why would I promise to do that? Because of peer bullshit. pressure. Because it's like, it's the temple. It's going to be great. It's where well, you go. Well, and your parents want you to do yeah. it. And your friends are doing it. I get it. It's a cult, Shelly. Yes. So it's weird that they make you promise to abide by something before they will even tell you what it is. You know, I know we're early in the podcast, but mm-hmm. I'm starting to think this Mormon stuff is all completely <laughs> fake. Bullshit. Oh, God. <laughs> you think? Is there's it no girth in the way. loins? No, there's no girth loins. in the loins. No. <laughs> I'm making Health in the up. navel. Health in the navel. Marrow in the loins. Marrow, marrow in the bones. Health in the navel. Marrow in the bones. I think Strength in the loins and the sinews. Power <laughs> in the priesthood be beyond me. Upon my posterity through all generations of time and throughout all eternity. <laughs> so if you're a Mormon and you're listening right now, you're freaking out. You're like, she just said something from the temple. She's going to hell. I can't. <laughs> She's killed on the spot. Guys, <laughs> it's lightning. just words. It's some wacky, I don't even know, ritual thing that you got to re- repeat a bunch of stupid shit and do well, a handshake. if you don't know it, you can't get into heaven. And I'm like, how does this work? Come on. Those of you who thought this through, when you die, are you like now going to walk down this tunnel and there's angels standing as sentinels? That's a Mormon phrase. Save it for a phrase of the day. Okay. <laughs> and you have to tell them the secret words, the weird handshake. So Seriously, weird. what if you don't remember? Well, you know what? Here's the dumb thing. Well, there's a lot of dumb things. Yeah. A, what if you don't remember? B, I know so many people who couldn't even remember their new name. <laughs> so stupid. I know. And there are so many people in, in like third world countries that they are able to go to the temple one time in their entire life. And they save up all their money and they take the bus and they go one time. What so do you mean they save up other money? Because they got to pay to get in, essentially? No, no, no. They got to like travel. They have to travel somewhere. And so they go one time. You really think they memorize all that bullshit in one time? No way. Yeah. You think they memorize health in the navel, marrow in the bone, strength in the loin and the sinews, power in the priesthood be upon me and my posterity through all generations of time and through all eternity? Whoa. In one sitting? Damn. Not going to happen. How long did it take you to memorize oh, that? Oh, my gosh. Seriously, I was so stressed out every time I went to the temple because 
I was afraid to get it wrong. So you had to say all that every single time? Every time. There were lots of things you had to say exactly right. What? Okay, let every me ask you time. this. And it made me so nervous and so anxious. So normal religion doesn't do this stuff. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Scientology might have their own crazy crap. Yeah, because they're a normal religion. <laughs> <laughs> So all this memorization of all these weird phrases and mm-hmm, shit, mm-hmm. what is the point of it? What do you think is the, the point of all that? Well, A, it's all made up. Well, right. People like my mother-in-law would say that God is a God of order, and so things are said this many times, and he's very orderly, and so there's certain things you have to do, and there's traditions. And the more my mother-in-law would explain God to me, the less I liked God. I'm like, I wouldn't even want to hang out with him at a bar. Like, he sounds shitty. Very boring. Do you know why Jesus supposedly came to this planet? Uh, to save us from our sins. To relieve us from all the stupid Old Testament oh, right. rituals. Yeah, so why are we still doing that A lot that of shit? religions aren't doing that. Well, here's what they tell you in the temple, by the way. So when Jesus came, he did away with the old law of sacrifice. And so now, the new law of sacrifice that you're told is that you are supposed to dedicate your time, your money, Money, your talents, everything you have to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You promise to do that. That's the new covenant you make, that you will give everything to the church. But that's my point, that Jesus came and abolished the old ways. And so now we have grace and forgiveness. Not saying that people who go to church and listen to the sermon and enjoy the music shouldn't give an offering to help support that. Right. Like we're asking for supporters, right? We offer a service every week. Same with going to a church that you love. I get it. Give an offering. But the way that the Mormon religion is set up, it's all works-based. Sure. It's not about grace and forgiveness. Mm -mm. It's all about how much you do, how much you contribute, how you measure up. Yeah. And in Mormonism, you can never do enough. They like to say, um, endure to the end. What? Like, I, yeah, I'm sorry. You I'm need not to write to these endure. phrases down, by the way. Who said that, listeners? Endure to the end. I don't remember. Was it Hinckley? So One of the prophet? prophets said, endure to the end. <sighs> okay, can we jump on to another topic? Yeah, we can, because it wears me out. we get on that? Because we were talking about phrases. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I have another announcement. Okay. Can I do a drum roll? Oh, sure. What you got? Mary and Shelley will be in Utah. Oh, yeah. On June 1st and 2nd for the Utah Pride Festival. Yeah, we will. We will have a booth at the festival. We're going to have a good time. And I know we have at least one or two Utah listeners. (laughs) One or two or (laughs) hundred. And we want to meet you all. So please get your calendars out. Mark it off because we'll be there for both days. And we want to see your faces. Also, we're going to bring our mics. Yes. And do some interviews. Yeah, we'll get your voice on the show. Yeah, we'll try to, as as long as we can hear you. Yes. It depends on if we're placed close to a stage or not. We'll see. So we've registered... We've purchased the booth. Like, we'll be there for sure. Oh, for sure. But that's as far as the planning has gone. So we don't know exactly what we're doing. We'll have we've, some swag to we'll hand have some out. some swag. I would love if we could do kind of a meet and greet. I don't know. We've got to plan this Ooh, all Ooh, that would be fun. A meet and greet, like maybe the night before or something. Ooh, yeah. Maybe at some bar? Yeah, for okay. sure. Okay. All right. Well, um, it's a date. It's a day, baby. (laughs) So listeners in Utah, if this excites you, if you think this is a good idea, let's brainstorm some uh, cool stuff that we can work on there. I like it. Do we have any more announcements? Yes. The radio blog program. Can I get that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sunday, March 3rd at 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 Central Time. We are going to be on a radio show, Shelley. Is that 4.30 Mountain Oh, time? I guess so. Because a lot of our listeners, I think, are Utah, so 4.30. Yeah, just go back an hour. Okay. So 4.30 Mountain Time. We talked about this a little bit last week. It's an internet radio program called Stand Up International, and how you get to it is blogtalkradio.com slash stand-up-international. There's actually a specific link to our broadcast that we will post on our Facebook page and also our homepage on our website, and you're going to put it on Instagram? Yeah, I'll I'll hit all the places. Okay, so this is live. Yeah, so you can actually call in and chat with us. Live on the radio. And you better not ask us difficult questions, (laughs) goddammit. Don't do it. Mm -mm. All right, should we get into it? Let's do it. Okay, so my sister-in-law, who was out here visiting, she's awesome, by the way. She's a current believing Mormon, 
and she asked me a question. She said, would you let your kids be Mormon? So my oldest, I think, was about 15 when we left the church. So some of the kids were raised most of their lives in the church. Some of them don't remember it at all. And Elise asked me, would you let your kids be Mormon? Like if they decided that they wanted to be Mormon. Yeah, that's a good question. That was a fantastic question because I know when I was an active Mormon, I would always hear stories about these kids who wanted to join the church and their parents would not let them. And I would think how horrible those parents were. Oh. But now, knowing what I know and having gone through what I've gone through, would I let my kids be Mormon? Hell no. Hell no. Wow. Obviously, when they're 18, they can do what they want. Right. So if I'm speaking of my underage children, no. No, no, no. That would be like asking someone, so would you allow your child to attend a harmful cult that teaches that women are less than men and that they need to blindly follow a prophet who tells them what to do and they have to give 10% of their income and they have a higher suicide rate. Like, who would do that? Who would say, oh, yeah, yeah, go, go. Here's the problem. I know too much. Sure. I was in it for over 40 years. I know too much. I know the damage. I know what goes on. And would I let them? Absolutely not. And that's actually one thing that I told Brent, because we both left the church, And he went back once or twice. I think they were trying to reactivate him and they asked him to teach a lesson in gospel doctrine class. And he, you know, he didn't believe this mainstream Mormonism anymore, but he did go back to teach. And that made me so nervous. And I I was finally like, Brent, just so we're clear, under no circumstances are our kids allowed to go back to church. And he was fine with that? He's like, oh yeah, no, I totally get it. Totally get it. And I was like, I don't care if they want to go. I don't care. You know, some kids might tell their parents, hey, I want to join this crazy cult and Mm -hmm. do these wacky things. And their parents like, no, as a parent, I know Mormonism is bad for children. And so would I let them? No. And by the way, I am very, very lucky that my ex-husband now has left. He left the church Mm -hmm. and my heart breaks for so many of you who have written into us and have said that you have left, but your spouse has stayed. And it crushes you to see the hurt that's being put on those kids that are still going. Because you know what's going on and you know what they're in for. Do we have a... Yeah, we have a letter we're going to read. Oh my gosh, let's do that. Let's jump in on that right now. So read this letter, please. Her name is Bree. So Bree writes, Hello, struggling here. I've listened to the podcast. It's been a reprieve to know that there is someone like me. 20 years and several kids later, also a Mormon, last year I had an affair with a woman turning point for me in that I did not realize how beautiful and wonderful it was. The signs that had occurred for me prior to that, prior to a rushed marriage at 18 for no other reason other than it just felt right and can't be fraternizing for a long time lest you fall into sin. Is that a Mormon expression? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I remember when Brent and I were dating, we stayed over at his parents' house one time and his mom got all pissed off because I was staying in the living room, Brent was staying in his room, and sometime in the morning when we both woke up, he came in the living room and just kind of laid down next to me on top of the covers on the ground, and we were just chatting. There was nothing going on. His mom came in and, like, freaked the fuck out because we were laying on the ground talking. And she told us, you guys either need to hold hands for a year, because she was thinking we were waiting to get married until my dad got back off of their mission. So, And it was about a year away. She said, you either need to hold hands for a year or you need to get married now. Wow. The risk of some kind of sexual something because we've been together for too long, you need to get married now. Do you think she was worried about you actually getting pregnant before you were married or just what people would say? No, sexual sin, any sexual sin. Because if you have this sexual sin and you can't get married in the temple, it's embarrassing for the families. Well, if you can't get married in the temple, doesn't that mean you won't go to heaven? If you died right then, like, there's a whole repentance process and all this bullshit. Oh, my God. But Brent's mom was so concerned that we were going to become physical because we had been dating for a while that she's like, you either need to put up boundaries so you don't go any further than just holding hands or you get married right now. Like, hurry and get married before you commit some physical sin and then you can't get married in the temple and your life is horrible. It's just ultra shit. So sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No problem. I've always struggled with a church and to come clean about my affair and attraction to women. So Mm -hmm. she had an affair with With um, a woman, with a woman, Mm -hmm. as well as my complete and utter lack of belief in the church was awful for my spouse. So she um, had an affair with a woman. Right. And she didn't ever buy like the church's bullshit, essentially. Right. Yeah, so I'm sure that was a struggle at home. Sure, of course. Try to make the best of it, I guess, but those two things will not change. He's angry, bitter, threatening me in regards to if and when we divorce, promising to make it difficult for me 
if I begin a relationship with a woman. He says that it is ungodly and the kids shouldn't be exposed to that states that he will produce a family for them that consists of a husband and wife as an example of what a real relationship looks like. I should add that he is not at all a hands-on dad, and my replacement is really someone that will continue to do the work of the home and children. Our marriage has been terribly one-sided, meaning I am on the hook for the majority of the work slash kids and working full-time as well. Wow. That's like two full-time parents, and yet she's supposed to do all the work around the house? Yeah, women's work. Although he is promising to change if I recommit to him and the church, I'm worried for them, I guess her kids, in a joint custody scenario. Indoctrination, lack of supervision, so harmful. So she worries that he'll indoctrinate them into the Mormon church, well, Of I course guess. he will. They'll, they'll be going to church with him, and he's stating that he's going to find a replacement for her that's the good Mormon wife. Wow. It's terrifying. I'm not sure how to navigate this aspect. He isn't beyond all reason showing some empathy for my plight. I do recognize the depth of hurt I have caused him in the affair. Many of his words feel retaliatory and rightfully so. However, I want peace. I also don't want my children to not have their dad, but it comes at a price of exposure to his rhetoric. It seems to be hopeless. I struggle with the guilt of wickedness was never happiness. What does that mean? So Shelley? she probably felt happy with this woman, but being gay is wicked. And so when they say wickedness was never happiness, then it's like, you might think you're happy, but it's fake happy because you're being wicked. Okay. You've talked about fake happiness before. Yep. And how the sacrifice of your own self in being a textbook Mormon wife and mother is the greatest calling one could have. And you went through this. Mm-hmm. I feel so hopeless in this. I am in counseling. That's great. He is too, but I don't think it's helping him. How did you feel about your husband dating? Why am I resistant to it? I fear the introduction of an uber Mormon and his words about making a traditional family echo in my mind and heart. Thanks for reading. Any pearls of wisdom you have would be appreciated. So how did you feel when Brent started dating? You you were worried a little bit that he would date a Mormon woman, weren't you? I was terrified. <sighs> Oh, this sounds very dramatic, but I can't think of a worse thing than for my ex-husband to date and marry, in quotations, the perfect Mormon wife and mother. I would lose my shit. What would that be like for you? A, I would just know that my kids would just be stuck in Mormonism, mm. and that would terrify me. Yeah. Because I know what goes on. Also, it would be this knife in my heart of, I never achieved the perfect Mormon mom status. Mm. Couldn't do it. I tried. I tried with everything I had, yeah. and I couldn't do it. And the expectation that was put on me to be the perfect wife and mother because of the way that my husband was raised, that this is how a wife should act, this is how a mother should act, I just couldn't do it. Yeah. I even homeschooled the kids for three years. I gave it my all, and it was never enough because... It was exhausting. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I didn't crawl into bed saying, oh, I was such a good mom today. And those kids had such a good... Yeah. I felt guilt. Like, ah, oh, gosh, I'm exhausted. And those kids are making me crazy. And I didn't make a vegetable dinner. Shit, I forgot. And, you know, I, I, I didn't tuck Double them starches. in bed. What's that? <laughs> double starch. I double starched. Um, I didn't tuck them in bed. Uh, you know, I yelled at one of them because I lost my temper. Like, I couldn't I couldn't do it. So if Brent and I had gotten divorced and he stayed Mormon and he married some Molly Mormon chick that did everything the way that I just couldn't do it, yeah. that would have just stabbed my heart. Mm -hmm. like, I could see that. fuck. He found someone who could do what I couldn't do. Mm, mm -hmm. That would have devastated me. Well, I don't know if I could have handled that. For sure. And I think your story is a testament to how it's a lie saying, all you got to do is X, Y, and Z, all the steps, and you will be happy. Yeah. No, it doesn't work. I did all the steps. I know. I gave it my best. I did the fucking steps. Yeah. And it did not work. <sighs> Gosh, this is a lot to process. This is, this is a lot to like think about. And so I feel for Bree in her husband's threat that unless you recommit to me in the church, I'll find someone who can. Like, that is such a painful well, thing. Well, and it sounds like if she finds happiness 
mm-hmm. in another relationship outside of him mm-hmm. that he might take the kids away. That's what it sounds like to me. That is not an uncommon threat for someone who stays in the church yeah, and the spouse I, leaves the church because— That's scary. The same way the person who's left is terrified that the kids will be raised in this fucking cult. Yeah. The person who stays in the church is terrified that the person who left the church will take the kids out of the church. Yeah. It goes both ways. Right. Because when you're in the church and you're staying and you're like, oh, this is fantastic, you don't see the damage. No one understands how damaged they are until they leave and they look at it. Right. I tell you what, if you don't think you're damaged, go to a non-LDS therapist Mm -hmm. and just kind of give them a rundown of your life and the things you've been taught (laughs) and just listen to their reaction or just look at their facial expressions when you tell them some of the bullshit. Yeah. The very first time I went to a non-LDS therapist and was just sort of going over my life, I wasn't even trying to throw the church under the bus. I was still like a partially believing member. I was just sort of talking about things, Mm -hmm. about my life in the church. And she was like, what? Wait, what? <laughs> Gets the pen out, starts writing furiously. Oh, Wait, bet. tell me again. Yeah. Tell me that story again. Wait, what? That's spiritual abuse. Right. She was in shock. I'm sure. And I wasn't trying to rip the church. I was just like, this is my life in the church. Mm-hmm. Guys, it's fucked up. Yeah. If you're still in the church and you don't see it, it's because you haven't left yet. Okay, so how can Brie, who wrote the letter, thank you, Brie, how can she feel at peace and free to date someone else, especially a woman, yeah. knowing that her husband is threatening her in various ways? So I actually replied to Brie, like okay. I replied to everyone who yes, messages. You do. And I told her that I was sorry that I didn't have a good answer because she is legitimately in a shitty situation. Yeah, she is. And she's at the beginning of a shitty situation, and it's, it's going to be be hard, but also that she has no control over what her husband, maybe ex-husband eventually, teaches the kids. That's one thing that sucks about divorce. You can't control what the ex tells the kids. it's true. All you can do is be a better example to the kids of love and acceptance and kindness and just trust that you've put enough into these children to think for themselves and that they can find their own way out. Yeah. It sucks. I think that had we still been in the church and I had come out of the closet, my kids might have struggled with that. Really? But since we left the church, they didn't. They were like, whatevs, mom, it's cool, because mm-hmm. they're in a day and age where they learn about it in school. It's not mm. uncommon to have gay friends in high school. Yeah, like kids true. are already coming out. They're not getting their asses kicked in the parking lot, at least not in Northern Virginia where we live. But it took us leaving the church, and it took it being 2000 and whatever year it was when they were starting to be exposed to these things. And so it wasn't hard for them. If your kids are still indoctrinated by the church telling you that it's a sin, that it's wrong, um, you're going to have a rougher time. Yeah, you for are. sure. Especially if these kids are going to want to serve missions or whatever. And if you have left the church and you are now with your gay partner, these kids won't be allowed to serve missions unless they say, hey, my mom is wrong. Mm. This is from this terrible fucked up exclusion policy that the church put in play. Uh, and we'll we'll talk about that. You know, I wonder how old her kids are because if she has kids under the age of eight, they will not be allowed to be baptized if she is living the gay lifestyle. Wow. Yeah. I guess they could deny it. Not at age eight. They won't let you. They ha- you have to wait until you're 18. Then you may be baptized, but you have to say my mom's lifestyle is wrong. I mean, couldn't the whole family deny that she's a lesbian? Well, sure. Yeah, they could lie. But these they are Mormons lie. we're talking about here. Like you don't lie to <laughs> These are Mormons we're talking about here. <laughs> you just you take your jar of mayonnaise into yep. church and you don't lie about it. Yeah, Mormons anything. pick and choose what they lie about, just like the rest of the world. Ah, so they do lie about some things. Uh, yeah, how about church history is a whole fucking lie. <laughs> yes, Mormons lie about things. Jesus. Why do I think that Mormons eat a lot of mayonnaise? <laughs> do I have that wrong? No, you might be correct on that. We should find out what's like the per capita, you know, record or whatever. The per capita stats on mayonnaise way. consumption in America. I don't know why I think it. <laughs> Weird. Anyway, Bree, thank you for writing in. And I'm sorry. And please stay in touch with us with what's going on with the situation because we talk about it a lot. Yeah, we like, do. We feel for you. It sucks. Ooh, this reminds me, I want to get in just that, because uh, I think I've I've blown over it the last couple of episodes oh, about ahead. how to get in touch with us. Yeah. Yes, do. Go. The easiest way is direct contact. And. And that is contact at latterdaylesbian.org. You can also hit us up on Facebook at Latter Day Les. Is that not the same for Twitter and Instagram? Should be. Yep. Okay. Finally, our website is just latterdaylesbian.org. We'd love to hear from you on any of those. Um, so can we address the second half of like if my kids were 
well, above yeah, age again. 18. You said if you're 18, it's a different story. So Yes. So if any of my children age 18 or over that I couldn't deny them being baptized in the Mormon church, if they decided to join the Mormon church, I would be crushed. Yeah. Devastated. And why is that, do you think? Multiple reasons. One is they know at this point the trauma that I went through. Mm -hmm. They know at this point how the church feels about gay people. True. They know that they would have to actually disavow my behavior. Mm -hmm. They would have to say, my mom is living a sinful life. She's living with her lesbian lover, and it's wrong. They would have to say that to be baptized, Mm -hmm. and that would crush me. Yeah. They would also make it so that I couldn't attend any, or or their dad for that matter, we could not attend any of their weddings in the temple. Right, that's true. I would be crushed. Mm. That they would choose to go to a cult, knowing what they know, knowing how it's damaged me, and they would somehow decide to join and basically just stab me in my heart. Wow. Like, I honestly can't think of many worse things that they could do that would hurt me. Wow. Okay. And so I do understand why people who leave the church don't want their kids to be involved in the church because they know. People don't leave the church just because they're bored <laughs> or because they want to go drink. Uh-huh. They leave the church because they know how hurtful it is and how harmful it is, and that's why they don't want their kids there. Yeah, It's already hurtful to me. And this is something that I need to work through clearly. It still hurts me that my extended family, that they're all Mormons. Mm. Because I know that they are supposed to believe that I am living a sinful lifestyle. Yeah, they do. And that hurts me. It hurts me that they stay in something that is so against who I am. Right. That's what colors their opinion of you. Yeah. So every time I hear the church say some more bigoted, mean-ass shit about the LGBTQ community, I get angry that they say it because my extended family are listening to that and agreeing with it. Mm -hmm. They don't have their own opinion. They will agree with what's said from the pulpit. I know. And it pisses me off. That's got to be hard for you. Yeah, it sucks. Like, I don't really talk to my family anymore. I I would love to, but, you know, I know what they think about me. Right. Because no one's bothered to tell me they think otherwise. Yeah. No one in my family has bothered to call me and say, hey, I know the church teaches that being gay is a sin, but I don't believe that. Mm-hmm. I'm happy for you. I'm glad you found love. No one's bothered telling me that no. shit. And I was a Mormon for 40-something years, so I know that they know that I know what the teachings are. Mm-hmm. And so I just sort of have to come to the conclusion that they agree with them because no one's bothered telling me that they don't. Yeah. So fuck it. I'm going to get a little angry. Yeah, that's got to be really hard for you, yeah, Shelley. it sucks. It sucks. I know. It sucks that they haven't bothered saying, yeah, I think the church is getting this one wrong. I don't, yeah. I don't think you're a sinner. Well, but how do you say the church is getting something wrong and actually be a true believing Mormon? That's hard for me. So people will say that they are nuanced Mormons, meaning, right. well, I'm Mormon because of the culture. But I don't believe all I don't of understand it. that shit. Why would you want to be Mormon for the culture anyway? But you don't believe all of it then you're not really a true Mormon because Mormonism is you believe your leaders. Mm -hmm. You do what they say. You trust their word. When you go for your worthiness interview to go to the temple, they ask you, do you sustain your leaders as prophets, seers, and revelators? Do you sustain the prophet as the only man with the keys of the priesthood that speaks for God? Wow, is this like a quote from something? Oh, yeah, this is the temple recommend interview. Okay. You have to say yes to that shit. Yeah. So you can't say yes... And then, not and then really the back of your it. mind being like, but I think they got it wrong about the gays. It doesn't, it doesn't go, <laughs> I guys. I like that little voice you use. <laughs> is it a good one? <laughs> yeah, it was good. So I don't get it. If there's anyone listening who does view themselves as a nuanced Mormon, help me understand this because it doesn't make sense to me. Is nuanced Mormon an actual expression? It okay. is. It's like, I think the church is true just as much as any other church would be true. And the, the Book of Mormon, you know, there's some good things in it, but some of it's crap. And I'm sure the prophet's inspired, but sometimes he gets it wrong. Like, that's a nuanced Mormon sort of thing. But a real Mormon's like, no, no, no. The prophet speaks for God. He yeah. doesn't get it wrong. How does a prophet get to have that position? Oh, you get old. <laughs> you get old, you rise through the ranks. Nobody elects you? Because I could guarantee if it was an election, half of them would never have been prophets. You okay. rise up the ranks. It's whoever's next in line. Of course, they act like everyone prayed and fasted and they decide on this mm-hmm. person. No, it's whoever's next in line. Because I've heard of some Catholics not always believing everything the current pope espouses. Yeah, Mormons aren't allowed to do that. Okay. Nuanced Mormons do that, but again, I'll say it again, you're not really a Mormon. Mm-hmm. You're not a Mormon in the definition of what Mormonism is. Yeah. Because if you went to your bishop and was like, hey, here's the thing, 
I think the prophet's a nice enough guy, but I think he's fucking some stuff up. And also, I think they're fucking up the whole gay thing, and I actually have gay friends, and I'm very supportive of gay marriage. If you get a bishop who's super straight and narrow, he's going to snatch your temple recommend Yeah, that's away. what I was going to just say. Yeah, because there's a question in the temple recommend interview that says, do you affiliate with people or groups who go against the teachings of mm-hmm. the church? Mm-hmm. Well, Every LGBTQ person goes against the teachings of the church. So if right. you're thinking that gays should be allowed to get married, you're going against the teachings of the church. You're right. going to lose your temple recommend unless you get a really nice liberal bishop who's like, meh, whatevs. But you get a you get an ass like the one I had, mm-mm, gone. Well, he snatches it from how you. How many of them are actually liberal and easygoing? I know of a few, uh, you know, East Coast types, n- probably not in Utah, but I do have a friend who I was in church with, and she actually told the bishop, look— I think the gays should have rights. And the bishop's like, okay, and, you know. So her temple recommend was intact after it that. Was, she was getting permission to be baptized, I think is what it was. And she came in saying, look, I'm a feminist, I'm a, I'm a liberal, I'm for gay rights. And the bishop was wow. like, that's fine. All of that was okay by this guy. Yes, but that's huh. very, that like, a small rare. percentage. You yeah. try that shit with most bishops, and they're like, whoa, scream. Yeah, uh-uh. yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. They actually, this is a term. We might want to use this in our um, phrase of the day. Crazy Mormon phrase of the day, but it's called bishop roulette. What? So maybe we should hold off on some of these. <laughs> well, this has to do with it. So bishop roulette is your punishment of, to your crime depends on your bishop. When I went to my bishop, he was so by the book and such a dick. And I don't know why that word's on my mind today. Um, but he was huh. very cut and dry, like, no, you had beer, give me your recommend. Like, that right. was it. I lost that on yeah. Bishop Roulette. But there are some bishops, probably like the bishop that my friend had, that would have said, well, let's try to not be drinking beer. Mm-hmm. Um, keep your recommend. I know you need to be going to the temple to pray and try to work on your testimony. We'll meet again in a wow. month and let's just not drink beer. You wow. know, so that's called Bishop Rick Roulette. Huh. Bishop Roulette, Leadership Roulette, whatever they call it. Yeah. That's crazy. I know. Um, recently, as in the last week in the news, an LDS bishop, so a Mormon bishop, got busted in a sex sting. Oof. He was buying sex from underage girls and trying to like pimp them out. This oh was a bishop. My, a bishop. In, oh my oh, God. Shit, I don't remember the name of the ward. But you're taught as a child that your bishop is. Amazing. Nothing goes wrong in the bishop's office. Mm -hmm. The bishop is someone that you trust, someone that you obey, someone who is connected to God, someone that you can tell them all of your sins. You trust this person. Yeah. It's okay for you as a child, a teenager, to go behind a closed door with this man and tell him about your sexual sins. Yeah, that's crazy. And you're also taught that as people are getting called to offices, like a bishop gets called to this office, doesn't get paid for it, he gets called to it, that the stake president or whoever's calling him has this spirit of discernment. That's this mantle that they have on them that they will be able to discern right from wrong. And so when they call people to these callings, it's actually God calling them because they have this discernment. So where the hell was God when the stake president was calling this man to be a bishop when he was a pedophile? Yeah. He actually left his job as a cop. I don't remember where they said he was um, because he was being accused of sexual misconduct. So he left his job. And it was after that that he was called to be a bishop. Bishops are like the leaders over the youth. They they are always interviewing the youth. He's around the youth. Yeah. Where was your spirit of discernment? So when someone's like, oh, God was telling me that I need to call you whatever calling, fuck you, dude. I don't believe it. Yeah. No. Uh-huh. No. And no, you don't just trust someone because someone else says God wants them there. No. Why would God want a pedophile in that position? Well, if he does, he's a jerk. <laughs> he's a jackass. He's a jackass. Mormon God is a jackass. I don't usually say God is an asshole. God is an asshole. Mormon <laughs> God is an asshole because he either inspired this stake president to call this creepy pedophile as a bishop or he just sat back and like ate a sandwich and didn't bother warning the stake president, <laughs> bro, don't call this guy to be bishop because he's a pedophile. What kind of sandwich does God eat? I'm thinking like bologna bologna and like... I like bologna. I think that's a good Oh, bologna sandwich. (laughs) Because it's all a bunch of bologna. Wait, wait, with mayo. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Extra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On white bread. Yes. So this whole attitude that your bishop is amazing because he's bishop, I hate it. It pisses me off. Um, I think I told this story before. I'll just sum it up. In a Sunday school class, we were having a, a discussion about obeying your priesthood leaders and I made the comment of like, guys, we, you need to use your own 
smart. You don't just trust someone because of the calling that they have. Mm-hmm. You can't you can't give away that power. And the bishop in the ward was who, who was sitting behind me. It was in like Sunday school. He raised his hand and he said, "You can always trust the bishopric." will never lead you astray. Mm-hmm. And I raised my hand again. I was like, no, I'm sorry. I have to respectfully disagree. Like, why would you teach that to someone? I'm surprised I didn't take your temple recommend that day. It was a, within a few days that that went down. So <laughs> why would you say to anyone, so listen up, anyone with this certain title in church, you can trust them. Right. That's dangerous. And don't say that to kids. Yeah. You don't want to just tell kids they can just trust people blindly. No. That's but they right. do. They tell them that. Um, so bishops don't get paid. Mm-mm. Aren't they basically the pastor of the congregation? Yeah, they put in so many hours. And of they work. have jobs on yeah, top of Yeah, they this? have jobs. And they be their bishop, they don't get paid. Do they preach a sermon on Sunday? No, they get um, members of the audience, members of the congregation too. Did you wow. know that? Yeah, you're assigned um, to a topic and then you get, which is why you can hear some crazy shit when you go to a Mormon <laughs> church. <laughs> Sounds riveting. <laughs> there was this one lady, she was this cat lady, not to, not to offend any cat lovers out there. Um, but she would always get up and tell some story about her cats. And I enjoyed it. It was like, oh my gosh, she's getting up. Here comes a cat story. I remember one story. She said that something was wrong with her cat. The cat was having problems. And so she was trying to find the number for the vet. And so she was trying to just call the number from the vet um, for memory. But for some reason, her memory called her bishop. And so she talked to her bishop about, about the cat. And what a blessing, because then he was able to give her the number to the vet. <laughs> God gave the bishop the number to the vet's office. Yeah. Wow. It was a miracle. Yeah. Or he Googled it. I don't know. (laughs) I think that's more likely. (laughs) So we um, have gotten a little off what we were going to talk about tonight. No, we talked about a lot of things that we meant to. We We just are missing some things. Okay. Yeah. We wanted to jump back into your story about leaving the church. I'm trying to think where we left off. Uh, Last time we left off, we talked to the bishop, talked to the stake president. About drinking beer. Yes. And listen, I am glad that last week we kind of took a break from my story because I had a chance to sit and chat with my ex-husband and he was like, how did you not tell the part about the For the Strength of Youth manual? What? And I was like, oh my God, I totally forgot that. Are you ready for this? Yeah, what is this? Okay, it's good good shit. So one of the times, I think both the times when I went into the bishop and we had this discussion about the Book of Mormon, or not the Book of Mormon, about the Word of Wisdom and whether alcohol was okay or not. And I was like, it says mild barley drinks are good. And he was like, that's not what that means. And what he did is he got out this pamphlet and it was the For the Strength of Youth pamphlet. And he slid it across the desk to me. He said, it says in the For the Strength of Youth manual that alcohol is forbidden. And I said, this is a manual for children. And he said, no, (laughs) this is scripture. I said, this is not scripture. And he said, anything that's approved from the prophet and the 12, quorum of the 12, anything that's approved is scripture. Well, what's in this manual? I'm about to tell you, but first I'm just, I'm just setting. So people who are listening are like, oh my God, he said that scripture. It's a pamphlet given to the youth. (laughs) And he was trying to take this pamphlet and be like, this is why we can't drink. Was the pamphlet engraved on golden plates? It was a little (laughs) shitty pamphlet. So what I decided to do is I pulled this up. And so I'm going to read you what he read to me. Um, But then, of course, I had to look at some of the other topics, and I am, again, horrified at what they're teaching. In the pamphlet, you mean? Yeah, what they're teaching teenagers. So it says, your body's a temple, a gift from God. This is the part about physical and emotional health, okay? Mm -hmm. Choose to obey the word of wisdom. When you're obedient to this law, you remain free from harmful addictions and have control over your life. You gain the blessings of a healthy body, an alert mind, and the guidance of the Holy Ghost. You will be prepared to serve the Lord. Never let Satan or others deceive you into thinking that breaking the word of wisdom will make you happier, more popular, or more attractive. Clearly, they don't watch beer (laughs) commercials. (laughs) Don't do it, kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To care for your body, eat nutritious food, exercise regularly, and get enough sleep. Agreed. Practice balance and moderation in all aspects of your physical health. Also, avoid extremes in diet that could lead to eating disorders. Agreed. Do not intentionally harm your body. Great. Avoid dangerous activities that put your body at risk of injury. Great. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. Do not drink coffee or tea. Never use tobacco products in any form or any form of alcohol. They are addictive and harmful to your body and spirit. Being under the influence of alcohol weakens your judgment and self-control. Drinking can also lead to alcoholism, which destroys individuals and families. That sounds like scripture to me. Does it? <laughs> I'm like a grown-ass woman, and he's like, this is scripture. <laughs> he's reading a I'm kid's like, bro, pamphlet. this is a, a manual for kids. <laughs> yeah, probably kids don't use tobacco. Don't use alcohol because it's illegal, right? <laughs> anyway, so in that section, he was trying to tell me that I, since I was breaking this for the strength of youth manual, I, was, I couldn't go to the temple. It was ridiculous that he insisted that it was scripture. And I'm like, 
It's, it's not a scripture. Pamphlet. It's a pamphlet. But he <laughs> said, because it was approved by the prophet and the Quorum of the Twelve, it's scripture. Wait, wait, what was the corner? What the Quorum of the Twelve? Quorum. It's like the Twelve Apostles. Quorum. Quorum. Q U O R U M. Quorum. Quorum of the Twelve. Quorum. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so this just goes to how weird my experience with the bishop was, and how he was not prepared to have a conversation, like a realistic conversation about anything, because he was going from a pamphlet and then telling me I couldn't go to heaven. Well, okay, so what are the qualifications that someone needs to become a bishop? Do they have to go to seminary? They don't have to do shit. They have no training. Okay. They have children coming to them with major issues, and uh-huh. they have no training. Okay? Yeah, that's, that's crazy. It is crazy. And they're not paid for it. Nope. They don't have to go to seminary. Nope. Yeah, this seems really wrong to this me. Is bullshit. So let me, um, let me. I need to go over a couple of topics here. Okay. In, in this for the strength of youth because I, I couldn't help but read through it. Your body is sacred. Respect it and do not defile it in any way. Through your dress and appearance, you can show that you know how precious your body is. You can show that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ and that you love Him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Prophets of God have continually counseled His children to dress modestly. When you are well-groomed and modestly dressed, you invite the companionship of the Spirit, and you can be a good influence on others. Your dress and grooming influence the way you and others act. There were so many Mormon families that, after church, they had to stay in their Sunday best all day to maintain the spirit of of modesty and blah, blah, blah. Did I was, like, taking my shit off on the drive home. I hated it. Uh, What do you mean they had to wear it all day? Like, at home and stuff? Yeah. Why? Because they wanted to, like, maintain this godly whatever. Just to watch Sunday football or something? Oh, no way they were allowed to watch Sunday football. No way. Huh. Okay. Never lower your standards of dress. Do not use a special occasion as an excuse to be immodest, because when you dress immodestly, you send a message that is contrary to your identity as a son or daughter of God. You also send the message that you are using your body to get attention and approval. Immodest clothing is any clothing that's tight, sheer, or revealing in any other manner. Young women should avoid short shorts and short skirts, shirts that do not cover the stomach, and clothing that does not cover the shoulders or is low cut in the front or the back. This pretty much sounds like scripture. I'm sure uh, Moses brought this down from uh, Mount Moses Sinai. Moses his robe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I love how there's this paragraph about how women dress. And then they're, now they're going to talk about the men. Young men should also maintain modesty in their appearance. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> they say young men and young women should be neat and clean and avoid being extreme or inappropriately casual in clothing, hairstyle, and behavior. They should choose appropriate, modest apparel when participating in sports. The fashions of the world will change, but the Lord's standards will not change. I'm so glad your bishop read this to you. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Do not disfigure yourself with tattoos or body oh, piercings. Too late. My bad. <laughs> Young women, if you desire to have your ears pierced, wear only one pair of earrings. Oh, there you go. Yeah, or I guess the it spirit is. I guess it is scripture. <laughs> the spirit will leave your body. If you're not sure what is appropriate to wear, study the words of the prophets. Pray for guidance and ask your parents or leaders for help. Your dress and appearance now will help you prepare for the time when you will go to the temple to make sacred covenants with God. Ask yourself, would I feel comfortable with my appearance if I were in the Lord's presence? Oh, this is kind of what your dad talks about when he yeah. says, would you wear jeans or whatever yeah, to meet the king? Yeah, when we went to that Christian church, which was yeah. awesome, and they spoke about like loving each other and forgiving people huh. and being kind, That's but bullshit, because people right? were wearing jeans, my dad was like, this is not blah, 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 blah. Yeah, he's like, is that what you would wear to meet the king? Yeah. Yeah, that's what he exactly. said. Exactly. So why are they talking already about preparing yourself to go to the temple? I hate it. I hate that. Oh, isn't it all about preparedness? They're grooming you mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. birth practically. One more topic I'm going to go over really quickly before we wrap this up is the topic for the youth on sexual purity. Okay. Y'all ready for this? Now, what what age group gets this pamphlet again? Um, 12. 12 and up. 12 and up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Physical intimacy between husband and wife is beautiful and sacred. It's ordained of God for the creation of children and for the Mm -hmm. expression of love between husband and wife. God has commanded that sexual intimacy be reserved for marriage. Really? I don't really remember him. I don't remember saying that. (laughs) When you are sexually pure, you prepare yourself to make and keep sacred covenants in the temple. I hate how much stress and pressure they put on kids to remain sexually pure. Yeah, I'm sure. Because 
you're taught that going to the temple is like you have to do this. This mm-hmm. is your goal in life. Well, isn't it tied to the celestial kingdom? Well, yeah, you have to go. And there's so much guilt and shame if you don't get married in the temple. Yeah. And so right here out of the gate, they say, when you are sexually pure, you prepare yourself to make and keep sacred covenants in the temple. You prepare yourself to build a strong marriage and to bring children into the world as part of an eternal and loving family. You protect yourself from the spiritual and emotional damage that comes from sharing sexual intimacy outside of marriage. Oof. You also protect yourself from harmful diseases. Oh my Remaining gosh. sexually pure helps you to be confident and truly happy and improves your ability to make good decisions now and in the future. This is a lot to put on a 12-year-old. Am I right? Well, and when they talk about sexual purity, they're not oof. talking just about sex. They're like masturbation. So here's oof. a 12-year-old boy who might have already spanked the monkey because he's 12. <laughs> and now he's like... Oh my gosh, I no longer am temple worthy. I'm not temple worthy. I'm not prepared to build a strong marriage. I can't protect myself from spiritual and emotional damage. Like, this is so messed up. Yeah. Oof. Moving on. The Lord's standard regarding sexual purity is clear and unchanging. Do not have any sexual relations before marriage and be completely faithful to your spouse after marriage. Do not allow the media, your peers, or others to persuade you that sexual intimacy before marriage is is acceptable. It is not. In God's sight, sexual sins are extremely serious. Jeez. Mm -hmm. They defile the sacred power God has given us to create life. They defile. Defile. These are strong words. Yep. The prophet Alma taught that sexual sins are more serious than any other sin except murder. Really? Yes. So you got murder, sexual sin. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Good Lord. You want some more? (laughs) Never do anything that could lead to sexual transgression. Treat others with respect. Agreed. Not as objects used to satisfy lustful and selfish desires. Before marriage, do not participate in passionate kissing. What? (laughs) (laughs) So is heavy Don't you want to find out if your spouse is a shitty kisser? (laughs) Yeah, but what about heavy petting? Oh, uh, off the table. (laughs) No heavy petting. Do not lie on top of another person or touch the private, sacred parts of another person's body with or without clothing. So that's heavy or light petting. Because they know Levi Levin's result. Do not do anything else that arouses sexual feelings. Do not arouse those emotions in your own body. In other words, don't spank the monkey. Mm -hmm. Don't start the factory. Okay. Start the factory? Oh, God. Do we need to talk about that, too? Thank you, Bruce R. McConkie, for putting that into people's heads. Who? Mormon? Yes. Okay. okay. I have no idea. It was a talk on sexual purity and talked about it being like a your your start the factory. It's a factory. <laughs> when you start the factory, yeah, it wants to keep producing. Okay. Okay. Don't start the factory, kids. Don't start the factory. Um, pay attention to the promptings of the spirit so that you can be clean and virtuous. Ready for this? Mm-hmm. The spirit of the Lord will withdraw from one who is in sexual transgression. So what's the spirit going to do? Leave. Leave. So if you have passionately made out, mm-hmm. the spirit leaves. Where does it go? I, I don't. I, yeah. <laughs> it goes up for a burger. So That's let's, crazy. let's let's go on to another paragraph here. You ready? Mm-hmm. Homosexual. Oh, homosexuals. And lesbian behavior is a serious sin. Is it? Okay. So they're putting this as a as a sexual sin being homosexual or lesbian. And what did we decide sexual sins were? What were we just told? Uh, Murder? Yep. Sexual sin. Yep. That's yep. the next thing. You have you have killing people, mm-hmm. and then like right underneath that is sexual sin, which is also being a homosexual and being a lesbian. And this is taught to 12-year-olds. Yes. Oof. Yes. Wow. If you find yourself struggling with same-gender attraction or you are being persuaded to participate in this inappropriate behavior, seek counsel from your parents and the bishop. They will help you. Yeah, I bet that uh, LDS bishop, Bishop Moss, uh, that got busted with that sex sting was probably more than willing to help you with your uh, sexual problems. Ouch. Okay, so this, to me, helps explain the high suicide rate in Utah. Uh, You think? Yeah. 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 Kids being normal kids, having normal desires, okay, that are made to feel like if they screwed up by masturbating one time or by making out with their girlfriend or by, heaven forbid, having sex in high school. Or um, by having homosexual thoughts. Like normal things that adolescents experience is a sin next to murder. Just being gay. Homosexual behavior is a sin next to murder. So here's your difference, right? 
So a kid who's straight can be told if you have sex, if you masturbate, whatever, like any of these sexual things are a sin next to murder. That's horrible. Mm -hmm. I'm not excusing that at all. I will say at least that kid, though, knows that someday he can get married and then can have sex, Mm -hmm. right? So Mm -hmm. whatever these desires are that he's having, he can somehow temper it and wait till he's married. I mean, it's all bullshit anyway, but I'm just saying there's there's hope for the straight kid. Okay. When you're the gay kid, Mm -hmm. there's not hope. Right. There's not a time when your desires will be okay. That's true. And that feeling of hopelessness, I believe, is what is driving these children in Mormon communities to not want to be around anymore. Yeah. Because there's no getting out. It's not no. like you can say, wow, I am just so full of hormones. I need to, you know, listen to my hymns and be a missionary and do all this stuff so I'm not like wanting to get with chicks. And then I'll come home from my mission and I'll get married. And then, whew, yeah. okay, I can, I can be this sexual person that I'm having the desire to be. When you're gay, there's nothing. There's no answer for you. Yeah, there's nothing. No. It's horrible. Yeah, it is horrible. Fuck you, church, for doing that to homosexual children. Mm Mm-hmm. That makes me very, very angry. Yeah. Homosexual, transsexual. Yeah. Yeah. Anything out of your hetero life. It's infuriating enough that they do this to heterosexual children. For sure. But the fact that they do it to homosexual and transgender children that have no hope of being able to overcome it makes me want to, like, blow shit up. Yeah, well, we kind of are on this podcast. We kind of are. Boom. So back to the question, would you let your kids be Mormon? Hell no. Right. Period. End of story. Maybe that's a good place to head out on. Yeah. I need some wine. (laughs) <laughs> we can get you some. I know where there is some. You know where there's some wine? <laughs> yeah. All right, goody. <laughs> so we're going to get Shelly some wine, mm-hmm. and we're going to wrap this up. Uh, wow, that was a little intense right there. It's a little infuriating. I know we, we laugh a lot on this podcast because, you know, we love to laugh, and there's some funny shit. And, you know, poking fun of hurtful shit could still be funny. But there's some things that just really get me, and especially when it has to do with the damage and the trauma. And with children, too, I'm sensitive to that. And I just just want to start throat-punching people. I understand. Um, Yeah. I understand. Of course you do. I think about my kids, and I think about what they could have been exposed to. And I am so glad I got out, and I'm so angry that this cult behavior and these teachings are still being put on these kids. Yeah, I can see why. I have nieces and nephews going through this shit. Wow. And their parents are just going along with it. Mm. It's infuriating. I'm sorry. I mean, but what do I do? You know, because I'm looked at as the crazy ex-Mormon. Yeah. That's the problem with being the ex-Mormon is you can't go back to your Mormon friends or family and warn them. Because no. they're like, oh, you're just angry and offended. Yeah, don't they don't take you me. seriously. So instead, you start a podcast, and maybe they'll listen. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe they won't listen right now. Maybe their kids will. Maybe. But think of all the people that are listening, Shelly. Yeah, it's true. And can relate to this 100%. That's why we do it. That's exactly right. We're yeah. going to keep on keeping on. We're going to keep on doing it. Yeah. Just try to stop us. Try. And you know, it might come to that. The <laughs> Mormon church might try to stop us. Bring one it. I say bring it. <laughs> bring it on, Mormons. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. That's a win for Satan. Win for Satan. <laughs> that's right. Mormons, 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 Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> say it again. Mormons. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right. Well, more to come. All right. This has been fun. As usual. Uh-huh. In the meantime, remember, steer clear of cults. Can I finish it? Yes. Because they are no joke. (laughs) All right. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening.